Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Here we go, folks. We're, We're back. Live. Hello. That is a real beauty. That is really something. That is really something else. I love it. Boy, my head looks little compared to that noggin. Who took that photo? Not someone we... Oh, is that you? Oh, okay. That's a hell of a photo. Where's the video from your wedding? Well, it's on the Patreon. Your speech? Not the speech. What am I, an asshole? I, I got to see I my watch speech. It every night. I don't want to see that ever, ever again. I'm talking the video when we were down and dirty, and there's oh. a camera right on. I mean, it was a six picture shoot, a six camera shoot. That's a round. That made the round. The wedding people loved it. Everybody was raving about that video. You got to send that out because, I mean, what's the deal? What are you hoarding that thing? Because, I mean, there was the, the, the ceremony, there was, there was tits galore. I mean, there was so many hot women oh, sweating man. and heels and the titties. There was some women there. I was like, this is not safe. It's not good for a wedding. I'm getting married, and it's like, never mind. Oh, but oh my god! I mean, I I, I wanted to finger. Every, I mean, Chuck took a swing at every dang oh, yeah. sight. Well, it's domestic abuse. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, they were some uh, beautiful ladies. My bride included was looking lovely, and uh, yeah. y- you were a stag that night too. So I know my Rrr. wife was uh, at home in stirrups trying to get a, a baby in her, and oh, yeah. uh, I was on the loot. I was fingering everything in sight. Oh yeah, including my dad. He got a taste. I mean, I, I it was it was. So Something else. That tit sweat, the, the armpit stink. I like B.O. on a woman. Really? No, not uh, particularly. Yeah, the armpit hair is tough, and I know that's like hair. controversial. <laughs> yeah, well, the oh, hair, hair keeps the Forget stink, it. I think. Uh, what am I, Dr. Seuss? But it's the same with a muff. You get a muff downtown, there's a blueberry in it, a, a paper clip, and a lot of, of funk. I love a muff. P-funk. I love a funky muff. For Pussy Marky funk. Mark and the Funky Muff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, by the way, I mean, I was following everyone in sight on Instagram afterward. I was oh, checking every yeah. story, every tag, get me involved, those dresses. And that Woo. night air, New Orleans, the Louisiana, uh, cool breeze, and that old that old building with the band and the fountain. It was a, it was a really a magical evening. That was special. That hey. was a special, special weekend. Needs. Special night. Other than all the sprinting from criminals. Sure. That was really fun. I mean, we saw a a knife fight broke out at breakfast, let's not forget. and that was the waiter. (laughs) Yeah, it was ugly. I mean, (laughs) we had a good front row seat right outside the, all the, you know, it was a nice day, so all the doors were open, and I don't know, 11 feet away was just on guard. You know, it was a fencing match. (laughs) And then Haynes, Andy Haynes, that pimple. He was like, this city's safe, it's great. Literally a knife fight breaks out, and I'm like, look at this. And he goes, what, that? Come on. Uh, I love that. That's gaslighting <laughs> right there. Like, what are we? like, what are we doing here? Also, I love, I, I'm from there. I'll tell you. It ain't safe. No. I grew up there. I grew up in Hawk. I was terrified. I was running from from people all day long. No, my cab driver was like, you stay over here? This is crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. This is. Ooh. He goes, maybe it changed. I don't know, but I don't, I don't drive here. No change. It's actually gotten better. That's the kooky part. I saw two knife fights at my graduation. Yeah, it was uh, bad. I'll never forget. I can't get the image out of my brain. Just a totally, totally uh, ripped a big fart. The uh, anomaly mark when you were like, guys, get out of here. Those photos huh we bumped into you at 11 a.m you were taking oh, photos was it was bad. me and ari and someone i don't it know was who. too much i couldn't handle it it was two worlds colliding emotions we were doing our vows you were like get out of here leave yeah. and i was like oh okay yeah. I, I wanted to fight back i was like i'm just on the street i'm a american i'm free well you were you were in my my comfort zone it was too much yeah well you were on the sidewalk my friend but uh I that was wild bubble. i had a bubble no bubble all right bubble boy Burst my bubble. Mmm, the real estate bubbles. But either way, it was a great night. I mean, we're, we're harking back. That was November. It was really something. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 this is a beauty. I mean, it's not exactly um, whatever, but uh, I, mean, I could break it over my head. Uh, and, uh, Joe, NYFBS. What does that mean? New York. New York. Oh. Funny business. Beer shirt. Oh, okay. 
F- well, let, let me ask you this there, Tubbs. Thank you again for this. Yes, very lovely. They say this is a big, you know, they got the seven-year itch with the marriage. They got the herpes itch. They got uh, itchy and scratchy. Life's an itch. Then you die. But they say the first year of marriage is the hardest. Would you agree? Why do they say that? Who says that? That's like a thing, you know, like a seven-year itch or uh, what goes around comes around. You know, it's, well, it's an expression. I never heard that. That's insane. Really? That doesn't make any sense. That's the honeymoon. That's what I thought, but I've heard it over and over. So why why wouldn't the, the most divorces end in the first year? I feel like I think so, and and you know no. it hit it all hits you like oh the the magic is over. I'm I'm living with this shrew. I hate her. I can't get it up. She hates me. These but, are all things my dad told me. But don't you think that's old school? Because you hadn't lived together before like uh, from the fifties. Like you never lived together. You marry after two days because your wife's pregnant. Right. And so you get married. Shotgun right? wedding. First year that you should cruise. Well, I've been the cruising. seven year itch is the seventh year. <laughs> the first year is the hardest, baby. I know that's what they say. Yeah, well, I don't know, but uh, you having a hard time? No, I'm, I'm soft. <laughs> um, no, it's been fine. I mean, it's the same shit, you know. We did in October and then November 12th, the day after the wedding, very similar. Yeah, exactly. I think that's I think that's an old adage because it's an old um, wives' tale. I, I I just think that uh, back in the day, the first year, you're like, oh my god, this is what she snores, she takes dumps, you know, she doesn't blow me. But now I think my wife's blow me while taking a dump and snoring, so yeah. I know the deal. A blumpkin, we call that <laughs> trifecta. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, good. It's nice to hear that because I was sitting there going, "Here it comes. It's still, it's still within a year. Oh boy, the the hammer's coming down." But the idea that like the eleventh year is easier than the first year—that's why I brought it up. I thought it was odd. No, because I'm in year six and it's a complete nightmare. So. Ah. All right. Well, the sixth year is the hardest. That's what I hear. No, I think then we're gonna have a baby. That's when oh. you really hate each other. Agreed, and you love the baby. It's weird because you it's like that Louis bit. You you go, This is love. That that was bad. Well, I think what happens, everyone says, is you just become like uh, teammates instead yes, of lovers. That's the key. You're like, all right, you clean his ass and I'll eat him out. And right. uh, instead of just going out to the movies or whatever. It's a lucky kid. But <laughs> also <laughs> my Mind buddy. My here? Yeah, sure. Okay. My good. buddy is a uh, big um his wife's like a big kind of activisty, progressive, the whole thing, and he's like Boy, hey. big feminist lady. And then they had a kid, and he, she went full Rosie the Riveter, do rag. I'm always in the kitchen. Uh, let me, let me breastfeed this piece of shit. I mean, all in on the on the the gender roles. Wow. Okay. So well, yeah, I mean, you kind of naturally the, a lot of times gender roles. I mean, we're gonna get in the weeds here and get shot down and killed. But a lot of times, it, it kind of happens naturally. You go into yeah. your natural thing. It's like I'm like the trash stinks, yeah. and uh, I go, let me take the trash out because it smells and it's heavy. It's heavy. So you... I grab the trash. Not that my wife never takes the trash out, but if she does, I go, oh, I'll grab that. Right. That feels like a man's job. Exactly. And I do dishes, but yeah, but yeah. I get the same thing. You know, there's a, the lights out on the ceiling, and it's scary to get up on the ladder. I, go, I got it. Yeah, you're taller. Right. And then the suitcase, you got to put the suitcase up in the closet yes. along with my personality, so I shove that up in there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then folding clothes. I don't know how to fold a clothes. Well, I guess we drop off, so. Ah, uh, but they fold it. Are they women? Aha. Uh-huh. See? Oh, oh, it comes back. Yeah, mine are Asian, and they are <laughs> They are lovely. You know what? This, this is the difference between me and my wife. Touch of the genitalia. Uh, she can get herself off. But... We go down. We have laundry in the building. No shit. Look you at ever, this motherfucker. You ever need to do it? We got it. It's one of the perks. If I ever need to do laundry, I'll pack up and head to the <laughs> come on by Greenwich Village. Yeah, you got to get your own detergent though. Nah. But um, we get laundry in the building, so I do it in the building. She still takes it out. Hmm. And I go, "What's that about?" She goes, "I don't like the machines." And I go, "These machines could be Nazi, racist, in blackface. I would still use them." Well, this is, see, this is, I, I'm with her on this, and I was just talking about this. Like, when I move to New Jersey, which up here, I'm already gone, mm. I'm still going to drop my laundry off, even in a home. What? Because I don't want to do laundry. I see. It, it's, it's 15 bucks. It's, laundry, to me, is still the best deal in America. 
I take all my dirty clothes. Chuck's agreeing. I take all my dirty clothes covered in cum and pubes and sure. puke and blood and baby shit. Yep. I just throw it at a, a, a sweet Asian lady. Oh. I come back 14 hours later, and I give her 15 bucks. It's folded, pressed, queefed. Boom. But to me, it's the delivery thing that is annoying. The, the money's great. It's a great deal. The, the folding is great, but it's just going there. When I got, I could just, I got a heart on and a panties, and I go downstairs. Yeah, you you have to go there, and then you have to linger but there. That's no, I go down, boop boop, two floors, go up. I'm back in my house. Yeah, that's what I do. That you're making a case for me. <laughs> no, then you have to go back. You're leaving the home. I'm then, not leaving the home. Then you have to go back. You're leaving your home. You don't live in the basement. <laughs> okay, well I'm not leaving the building. Then you walk up two flights. I don't have any flights. No flights. I walk around the corner. Same corner. I don't even cross the street. I just go. I drop it off, and then when I go back, it's not to move it from one machine to the other. Okay. It's to put it on my body. But I don't have to interact. You got to interact. Interact. With it. These people with it. don't speak English. Oh, all right. Well, we you interact got me with there. a smile. They're not, we're not having a fucking dialogue. Oh, we're not talking about the facts of life. I didn't know if they liked the pod or or you did their pod. No, they go and I go. Hey. <laughs> That's interacting. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, bang a gong, folks. All right. And then I come back. I mean, I, yeah, we interact. We, now we know each other. They say they know us. It's sweet. They go, Joe, hey. I think we got the same lady somehow because mine sounds exactly the same. I'm <laughs> in Manhattan. You're in Queens. But um, what was I going to say? But yeah, you, you, got you have a tent to... cooking here. And then you, you go, oh my God. This is intense. This is precious. Uh, um, no, you got to go. You have to have quarters. If you do it, you put the quarters no, in. No, it's all uh, pipes. It's a, it's a card. A card? Yes, a card. I have a card. No card involved. Ah, uh, we got a card. But beep, you tap it. And then you got to put in detergent. Sure. You gotta throw in a little thing. Sure. Then you have to fold it. You're I folding. Don't, I don't fold. Who folds? I don't. No one. What are you talking about? The, the casino folded. I got nothing. Origami. I just throw it in my... My uh, cupboard. No, because your clothes would look crazy. They do. I sweat it out, but I, I don't fold anything. All right. Well, you, I'll send you a photo. Supposed to fold. Why, why would I fold underwear? Well, underwear you don't have to fold. Okay. I mean, I fold underwear. I don't. But they do. I got button downs, which I rarely wear, but if I use them, I just put them back on the, r- the rack. What the about hanger. the t-shirt, those pants, the jeans? But no fold. No fold? Those weren't folded? No, these are nylon horse shit. So where were they? In a chest. Of drawers. I'm, I'm not accepting Come this no over. fold. Come Somebody's folding. No one is folding in my house. She folds. Okay. You know, Ben folds five, but uh, no folding in my stuff. Now, why do you You should look like a big, fat, crazy mess over here. What, you steam? You got I, steam? I have uh, some techniques to okay. de-wrinkle. All right. Uh, first off, I bring the, sho- the clothes in the shower with me. I throw them on the rod. Uh-huh. Dennis Rodman. And then I, I, uh, I don't... I do a little air dry, and I uh-huh. throw the shirt on while still a little moist. This is a lot of work to just avoid folding. Well, I'm doing less drying. I suppose that your jacket is now dry. Yeah. Well, I'm dropping off for life. I okay. don't even know how to do laundry. Hot, cold, wipe, swipe. I don't know any of the numbers. I think I'm like a vampire. Once that sunlight pierces me, it, I'm changed. I like being able to keep the clan hood on, go downstairs, and come back up. Okay. It's a wrinkly clan hood. Yeah, well... I'll steam it. Let me know if you need the space. I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm comfy, but I feel weird. Our feet are pretty close. This is quite a a, a spread. You well, got here. It's a this long is man spread. It's a long day living in Reseda and, uh, <laughs> it's you a long know, gay. Let me tell you that story. I, I might do it as a, as a bit. One time I had a porch situation in, in the city. You had a porch? Yeah. And uh, good. I saw somebody I didn't want to see, a comic walking up the street. So I did this move. And uh-huh. sat like this, and he still saw me. And then he came up, and he goes, "Dude, your posture's horrible. You got to sit up." He's like, "You're gonna have horrible problems." That's and I'm funny. like, "Yeah, that's a good point. Bad posture." Yeah, well, the uh, tour of the flaming porch. These shorts, when you stand, they look okay, right? Yeah. And then you sit, and they just—they really slide up. Yeah. Look at that, and you got no, not a lot of thigh hair. No, I guess not. I mean, I don't if either. you look close, it's in there. Hold on, let me see my thighs. Those pants have been folded. You're full no. of baloney. A little more thigh hair. Let me see if I can grab a patch and just pull it out. Oh, no. I'll Come on. Like an Asian laundromat lady. <laughs> 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 do yours have the triangular hats? Because mine do. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, they're nice ladies, and they they go, oh, you know, you're you're gay or whatever. They're fun. They they get me. I gotta come clean. I think mine are actually Spanish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I made up the Asian similar stuff. language. Um, Nosotros. Yeah, there you go. Como se dice? Ooh, sweating in here. I think the hot coffee, the heat, the the room. Very warm. I'm going to steam after this. Oh, there you go. Get an Equinox. Come on, we're going to be steaming. Ah, I'm scared. All right, A lot of point. commitment. I've been really hitting it. Yeah, steam is big. Oh, Steamboat Jesus. Willie. By the way, you know, I saw some footage from the old studio pre-wallpaper. Yeah. 80% better. Really? Yeah, this is no good. Because it's painted nice back here. Well, it was. We ripped it Wait, all down. this <laughs> room, you mean? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, we just had the sign, and it was kind of black, like charcoal. Well, if we wait long enough, they'll come down. Yeah. They're close. Uh, so, I know you got a bunch of stuff, but can I knock one out? Then we'll... Throw it at all me. Right. What, are you kidding? T- jerk off into your hand and throw it at me like multiple MIGs. So, I got a big... Uh- Apple pie. Matzo ball above me here. I went to my first Jewish wedding. Oh, did you pick up the thing uh, and throw up shit? The chair. There was way more full rabbi. I mean, wow. you walk in, they give you a yarmulke. That's fun. I got to wear a yarmulke. I did once at the Wailing Wall. And, oh. uh, it blew off, and I had to run and like step on it from rolling away. Oh, that's not a good look. No, it wasn't great. Palestinian. <laughs> but yeah, so. Uh, Went to the Jewish wedding in the Berkshires. I love the Berkshire. I want to buy a house up there. It is something nice. I mean, the rolling hills, the lush landscape, beautiful. That's it's it's God's country up there. Oh yeah, and you know it's all the bullshit, the cutesy stuff, the inn, the the cobbler, you know, the butter bitch, whatever uh-huh. her name is. It's very Amish, you know. It's it's a lot of like Americana, little flags, and a, an old man on a porch who hates blacks. It's fun. What was it, Williamstown? Right next to it. I love. That's where I want to buy a home. Oh, Red wow. Red Bank and Williamstown and uh, a couple other places. It was I called? Gotta get a job. Uh, North Adams. I know North Adams. You know North I'm Adams. Spent, what, are you kidding? What am I, an wow. asshole? I know North Adams. <laughs> no, no, it, was a, it was a lady who, I'm selling my own honey. She had a fucking jar on a table. It was great. That's beautiful country up there. It's like hippie country up <laughs> yes, there. Yes, yes. Hippie dippy. A lot of pride flags, the whole thing. Yes. But, um... This uh, North Adams is famous. They have the biggest art museum in America. Big arts, big gays, big, beautiful. Yes, yeah, artsy fartsy, and uh, they had the wedding in the art museum. Oh, so it was, it was really something because you're like these. Both these people are from Manhattan. Why the hell are we going to the Berkshires? But she grew up or summered there, whatever the hell it was. Really, something special. There should be a fart museum. Probably oh, yeah. is. I think it's called a gas chamber. Hey, but, uh, that's a different, lot of clips here. Different Jewish wedding, but uh, you walk in the handy of the yarmulke. But here's my here's my. Let's start from the start, from the chart. May's friend, the wife, rented a car, and we're going to drive up in this car with the bride. No, no, huh? The wife. Oh, your wife. My wife. Ah. Sorry. Well, you said May's friend, the wife. So I thought you meant you're driving with the bride, which I was like, that's embarrassing. My wife and her friend are driving up, and the friend is getting the car in Jersey City. You know, it's a cheap little loophole. That's what we did years ago. Yes. So they, she goes, meet meet me in Jersey City. We'll take off right from Jersey. We'll get there. Toot sweet. I said, great. We show up. We get to Jersey City. She's in line. She's like, I've been in line for an hour and a half. It's mm. like a uh, third world country down there. The New York City, tri-state area. It's is, crazy. It's garbage. We got to all move. It's all, it's not pipes. It's clogged it, pipes. Clogged pipes, yes. And we got to, we got to get an app going. I mean, like, you know, everything that sucks, some some cum guzzler comes out and goes, uh, untuck it. I made a, a business called Untuck It, where you don't have to tuck your shirt in, or I got Dollar Shave Club, or whatever the hell, and... All these horrible things where they fuck you with the million dollar razors, some nut goes, I'm starting this. Yeah, we should put our heads together and come up with something. We should. A homework machine or whatever. Jizz glasses, I don't know. But either way, this poor lady had to wait out there, uh, Laura Sogar. And, oh, I know uh, Sogar. Good egg. Comedian. But, yeah, check out their podcast, Risque Business, by the way, fun pod. But yeah, uh, I felt so bad, and you're like, what are we doing? This, What is this, the 80s? There's a line around the block coming out of a parking garage. Mm. So whatever, we finally get the car. They're like, all we have left is this Ding-a-ding. Camaro. A Camaro? They still make Camaros? Chevy Camaro, they're a hot item. What? 
But I mean, this thing's a hot rod, baby. This thing cooks. Is it like an 85? This, they're still making new Camaros? 2002, 22. I had no idea. And it's this low. It peels out. The wheels are wide. And I'm in the back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got to get behind the seat in the back. You know, you, you can't even. I'm not the tallest guy. My head's hitting the thing. It's brutal. Yeah. So we get there. We get the fucking Camaro. I'm in the back. I'm miserable. For the first 20, you try to stay positive. Hey, what do you think of the submarine guys? <laughs> and then by by 30 minutes, you're like, ah, oh, I want to kill your pretzel. You got to sit up. Yes, bad posture. I'm on a porch. So uh, we finally uh, we finally get there. Beautiful. Never been. God's country. I walk around. I went to an antique shop. I bought some things. I don't believe that. I bought uh, two Pez dispensers. <laughs> Swear to God. They were vintage. Tweety? I wish. It was uh, Superman and Batman. Oh, okay. Yeah, they could be worth something. You know how much you love Batman. Oh, I love the bat. But uh, dead parents must be nice. So, um... I'd kill for dead parents. It'd, it'd be good. Dan, you could be, get to become a hero. Yeah, probably All not. Right. Um, but yeah, so we go to the wedding, and uh, yeah, they hand you a yarmulke, which is really the only religion we do that with. Hmm. You know, when you go to like a Muslim wedding, they don't give you a burqa, right? I don't think so. Yeah. It's so just they... weird that they're like, be like us. You're in now. Yeah, I think to enter, you have to have... Isn't it a shield between you and God oh, or something like that? Oh, I like or... that. He can't see my thoughts. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, I don't know what yarmulke but translates. Same to. with the wailing wall. They, they, they make you put it on. Yeah. yeah. That I get because there could be some nefarious things going on in that wall. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Oh. We were walking around. Nefarious. nefarious. Yeah, yeah, fun word. There you go. Nosferatu. Mm. But, um, Did you know that movie's called that because they couldn't get the rights to Bram Stoker's Dracula? No. I just learned that from Francis Ford Coppola. Wow. They couldn't get the rights, so Nosferatu, the film, is uh, it's, ba- it's based on Dracula, but they had to move some things around. Huh. That was a big big flick, too. That really uh, changed the game. Huge. So this is I'm excited because this is full-on Jewtown, baby. These, this is like Temple. What? Yeah, and... Everybody's got the yamak on, Hava, Nagila, the whole thing. And there's a rabbi up top. The the groom is waiting up there, Ben, Western. Westerns. And the uh, the lady walks up the bride, full garb, can't see an inch of skin, very traditional. Hmm. She gets up there and he goes, oh, uh, oh, uh, and she has to circle him seven times. Come and on. seeing that in person, you're like, whoa, this is some old school shit. Wow, I've never been to like an actually religious wedding before. It was something, and all all the uh, the old Jewish ladies were like, "Woo!" You know, it was it was wild. Huh. And the noises, the hymns, the chants, and then he goes, <laughs> he sounds like RFK Jr. up there with the with the phlegm and everything, <laughs> all the Hebrew language, and uh, they do their vows. It was really touching. These vows were very sweet, mm. and uh, they do the, uh, the the glass break. That's fun. Love the glass break. <laughs> Muzzle top. Yes. Then we don't see him for a while. You know, they, it's a big wedding. We all cheers. I think they fuck. Come on. I think that's part of it. No. Through the sheet. The sheet. That's Muslims. No. Sheets are clan. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sheets is the a... The Jews don't sheet. I think they go through the sheet. I don't think so. Is that a rumor? No, that was the Muslim lady, wasn't it? In mm. Curb? I don't know. They definitely didn't fold it. I don't think there's a sheet. All right. Can't be a sheet. She motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, nor rain, nor sheet, nor snow. Well, this this episode is sheet, but... <laughs> this well, is like our best one. Are you kidding? That laundromat stuff was gold. Gold, gold. I mean, we're going to get shut down, but sure. still. But the laundry, they'll, they'll keep us in business. They like us. So, great time. Then you go to the bar. The, they open it up for the big dinner and everything. Just a great time. The parents gave speeches. Hilarious. Jews what? are funny. Of, well, of course. They're number one. They the dad his dad's a urologist. He opened with a dick joke that killed. Hmm. And I saw him later. He's like, "How how'd I do?" And I was like, "That was great." He goes, "You always open with dick." And I'm like, "So do I." Wow. Good times. And, uh, and who are these people again? They're comedian Ben Kirschenbaum. I don't know Kirschenbaum. He's a funny guy and, and a nice kid. Talk Valedictorian. Bomb in your name. Ooh, that never sucks. thought about that. Well, Harrison Greenbaum. There's a couple bombs. Yeah. Uh, oh um, boy, Bombay. Gordon Bombay. Yeah. Uh, Bombay Sapphire. Oh yeah. Bomb. 
I don't bum, know any more bombs. Bum, yeah. No, a bomb bo- back. Boston bomber. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Either way, she's a bombshell. Um, so, great wedding, got hammered, and then the, uh, this is what's fun about my wife. She pops open her little gay, they, they, they hold these little purses at weddings. I don't know how they do it. Mm. She pops open her little purse, and she goes... Couple of shrooms. This lady loves mushrooms. She I really met a woman that loves mushrooms more than this That's woman. It's the only vegetable she eats. And uh, we we pop those, and everybody else is like, oh my God, it's a bunch of comedians. So she's the shroom fairy. Everybody's dipping their little claws in there. I mean, between you, me, and the lamppost and the table, I, I think your wife has a mushroom problem. She this might. is wild. She's a mushroom cloud. <laughs> I mean,. Yeah. yeah, every story you have, she's on mushrooms. This lady. Well, those are the only ones I tell. Okay, I have I've hidden the heroin and coke ones. Okay, so we have a we have a great time. We do shrooms. Party's great. They do the chair lift, and they also do a thing the Jews where they uh, skiing. You know, <laughs> and they do the thing where they go. Uh, you, you grab hands and you all go in a circle. Right, I like that circle I forgot the thing. name of it. The Huppa, the Hoopa, uh, the Toran. I, I don't know. I tore a muscle. But, um, Weather control, show yeah, business. Yeah, something, money, penny pension. I don't know, but he just had a great time. And then uh, past that, we had wild shroom sex in the hotel. No kidding. Yeah, that night. And just, just a drunken fucking roll in the hay. And uh, we woke up, drove back, and... Right to the Pride Parade. Oh, my Christ. Beautiful drive home, Berkshires, talking wedding, talking shrooms, fucking high-fiving, jars of honey, and then, can't go this way, woo-woo, and then I just look over, and there's a guy with his dick going, yee-haw, fucking homo. Crazy. No, the parade, yesterday I thought, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go to the gym, but then I remember, I walked out of my house to get to the track, I got to take the train to the gym, Equinox, high five, and I saw all the, the folks decorated and dressed up, Oh yeah, macho man Randy Savage, yeah. and uh, I went, oh, it's Pride Parade, and I just oh, turned yeah. around and headed back to my house, because I was like, I'm not going in the city on Pride Day. And I live in the village, the parade goes right by my house, I can hear it, I had to close the window, put earbuds in, and pray to Allah to kill all of them, <laughs> but uh, it was wild, and, and God bless them. I had to do a stand spot, so I had to cut through everything. I was like, excuse me. I felt like um, like Mr. Wilson on Dennis the Menace. I'm like, you kids, you know, and they're all twerking and popping and locking. It was wild, but they had a blast, and God bless them. I, by the way, yeah, we're avoiding because the noise and the traffic, not because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we love the gays, yes. the tail lane, the other one. Oh, we yeah. Love, we love gay people. Our Tuesdays. fans. Tuesdays, yeah. yeah. So keep Nobody on, gayer. Keep on gay. We wish we were gay. Yeah. Um, we're halfway there. I've but tried. Yeah, it didn't take. No. So, uh, yeah, just a great time. But that Pride Parade's a real wrench in the asshole. I th- I've said this in my act now. I keep sprinkling in my act into the podcast. But I think I could be gay with a group. It's the one-on-one. Mm. That would be tough. That's interesting. It's uncomfortable. It's awkward. Hi, Bob. Hey, Joe. Right. What but, do you mean, uh, an orgy? Like, yeah, six, seven guys. Everyone's sucking each other off. Like, yeah, throw a cock in my mouth. We're having a good time in here. And you get to hang after. You got yeah. eight guys. You can watch a movie, watch a game. It's less awkward. That's it's the one-on-one on one aspect of, like, you just blew one in a guy's ass, and you're like, so, I'll see you later, I yeah. guess. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? That'll do it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, folks. If you get a team of dudes together. Text me. There you go. You got a new recruit. I don't want to be on a group text. I'd rather blow five guys than be on a group text. Oh, don't you love being the first guy to leave a group text? I don't even know how to leave one. Well, you can on Facebook. I've been in a group chat where they go, "Here's everybody's oh, spot time," yeah, and yeah. I go, "I'm out." That's nice. I know how to do that. Oh God, sorry, I got hit with a yawn. <laughs> there you go, folks. All oh, this gay talk made me want to open my mouth for a period of time. Sure, sure. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays of Stories is brought to you by Better Help. This episode brought to you by Better Help. You don't want to. Get to the end of your life and realize that you didn't live by your values. Therapy can help you figure out what's important to you so you can follow a path that feels right. BetterHelp's online therapy matches you with a licensed therapist who can help you move forward with confidence and excitement. You got to do therapy. It's good for you. We all do it. You know, we got Big Alan. But this is even more convenient. You can knock it out on a Zoom or over the phone, uh, highly recommend it. You don't have to go in and weird, get that weird waiting room and awkwardness seeing the other patients there who have been molested. BetterHelp is totally online, and it's convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. If that means doing therapy on the go, that's awesome. If you're tuning in from under the covers on a hard day, that's okay, too. 
BetterHelp is just here to meet you wherever you are. Just fill out a quick questionnaire and get matched with a therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for free. No questions asked. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays today. That's BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. And you get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Electric E-Bike. This summer, I love getting a ride around the city and zip past all the crowds with my electric e-bike. It's incredible for taking me wherever I want to go, whether it's weekend fun or that daily commute. If you're looking to level up your summer adventures, check out the Electric's new XP 3.0 bike with hydraulic brakes. It's the most popular e-bike in the industry and starts at just $9.99. With a top speed of 28 miles per hour, pure throttle on demand, and updated programming, it's time to experience freedom like never before. I love this thing. I'm whipping all over town. It's great for doing spots. It's nice because Manhattan is congested, and I'm zipping up and down that that bike lane, baby. I love the electric e-bike. You got to get on it. Sometimes you don't want to get in the car and park and find a spot. This thing is nimble it's quick it's zippy it's light it's easy to maneuver electric e-bikes come with a powerful removable battery a bright lcd display seven speed gearing and five levels of pedal assist to power your ride with awesome feature filled models finance as low as 73 dollars per month your adventures don't need to cost a fortune rediscover your independence this summer with xp 3.0 electric Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the epic models Electric has to offer. That's L E C T R I C E bikes.com. Electricebikes.com. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays of Stories is brought to you by Liquid IV. You know, I need that Liquid IV. So you spent last night bearing under a mountain of chips, popcorn, and pretzels. That sounds great. But now your body is crying out for a gallon of water. Do yourself one better and try Liquid IV. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks, comes in 12 delicious flavors, and now you can get it sugar-free with their zero-sugar hydration solution and no artificial sweeteners. You can help yourself get hydrated without a sugar rush or the dreaded 3 p.m. crash. Look, we all know I like to booze. I like to hit the sauce. I like to throw a few back. Tilt a few cold ones. Well, it sucks the moisture right out of you, folks. So get on it. You got to get that liquid IV. It's the best of the biz. Might as well hydrate. Your body works better when it's hydrated. Just mix one stick with 16 ounces of water and hydrate yourself two times faster than water alone. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating, now sugar-free. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you use promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Liquidiv.com. Code TUESDAYS. That sounds nice. A Berkshire's wedding. (laughs) That's pretty good. Love it. Well, you went opposite arm. Oh. You got to go same. That's about all I got on that Look one. Look at this. All right, that's uh. a stretch. But stretch Armstrong or arm weak. But yeah, so Jewish wedding, five stars of David. Great time. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta go to one. I got to. Who's who's the next Jewish wedding we met? We went to Venus, but that wasn't a Jew wedding. That was just kind of a Long Island chick. Uh, yeah, she's Italian. He's very non Jew. He sold Coke in college. I mean, I guess he's a con man. That's kind of Jewish. I'm a real. Oh, that'll be Jewy. But he's got to be a non-Jewish wife, too, I think. Yeah, probably. he's a, he likes a shiksa. And uh, who else? Hmm. Woody Allen? We missed that one. He married his daughter. Cantor. He's half, but Cantor. he's not going to... That's a Jewish guy. He's yeah. like a singer. But he's not going to do it. He might. He's not He's not going to do a Jewish wedding. No, but but, but if you're going to do a wedding, do your culture. You know, if you're Indian, gay, Jewish, Muslim, go go for it, I oh, think. We did my culture. Everyone was shit. I was be- three hours before it started. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Your and, dad wore a dress. He's Scottish. Quick. No emotion. No feeling. No crying. Just love it. right in there. Yeah, yeah. Same here. We ate a bunch of Cajun food and 
got drunk. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Juju wedding. Good time. That sounds like a nice wedding. Somebody made the good point. It was raining all day, and then the, the clouds parted, and my I don't know who it was. Some comic was like, yeah, they controlled it. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. yeah. Also, there was a weird, It's the whole thing's in an art museum, so it's beautiful and high ceiling and wooded and all the big windows, and you can see the, the mountains and everything, and then there's a big art piece, which is just pennies on the floor, and I was like, that's a little on the nose. <laughs> well, there, was, <laughs> there was less pennies at the end of the wedding than there was at the beginning. <laughs> pennies in a fountain. You catch the uncle yeah. crying them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, this is our most racist episode we've ever done, but we're having a good time, folks. Oh, yeah. Put a warning on the front, would you? Just a big old not for the faint of fart. Oh, yeah. Pennywise. Pen I'm foolish. I, I don't even know where to start here. I got Hollywood Nights. I got Columbus. I got uh, Spokane. I got a guy riding around punching people. I told oh, you. Oh, no, no song about Spokane. Did I tell you about that? No, please do. It was a, Is guy, that a kook. I can't remember if I told you. A what now? A kook. Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> the no. Asian section's over. I guess he was a, a small Latino man on a scooter driving around Astoria, punching the whites in the what? face. Yeah, he would roll up. There was video. They finally got him. They caught him. But uh, it was terrorizing the neighborhood. It was How scary. We were all doing like 360 walking around. But Whoa. Uh, well, they got him now, so it's old news. But uh, whoa, it was scary for a minute. But. Let me talk about L.A., because I was out in Hollywood, which is always exciting. Okay. Hate crime on a scooter. You don't hear about that. But they got them. Okay. And now there's a new gang of kids, evidently, on the city. You know about the city bike boys? Uh-oh. There's these teenagers. They hang out at the city bike. We have these bike rentals here in New York. Yes. You, it's like a big station. You, you lock them in. You take them. I use them every day. And uh, these teenagers, they hang out on the. They wait for you, like a, a guy or a girl, or whatever, to, to bring it back. Before they lock it back in, they take it from oh. the person. They take it on a joy ride. They smash it. They throw trash and dog shit at the people. Good to know. If I see a group of youngsters behind me when I'm banking... Yeah. I'll bank quick. The City Bike Boys, so... Shitty bike. Heads up, everybody. But, uh, yeah, I went out to L.A., Los Angeles. This was 10 years ago now. I don't remember what I was doing out there. How long has it been since we recorded? Well, you went to Australia. There's a time difference. Got it. But uh, I had Spokane Comedy Club. Yeah, good club. So I did a big West Coast swing. I was doing Spokane. So first, I flew out to Seattle to go to Gig Harbor to visit the old Walsh family. It was sure. my niece's birthday. That was exciting. She turned 11 and uh, had a good time over there, uh, played some video games and whatever the stuff with the kid. Mm -hmm. Then I went from there to Spokane. Sarah came with me. She came out Thursday, did a guest spot. I like that Spokane. Good room. Nice room, nice town, a little bit of hair on that town. It's yeah. Some, there's some stank there. Some heroin and some meth. Yeah, but they they don't really bother you no, too much. No, they're polite. It's a very Upper, e, upper West vibe. Mm. They're grungy, but they're polite. But went out there, had uh, Luke Monis opening. Hey, Lukey. Some great shows. Some Tuesdays came out. Not a, not a ton, but yeah. some. It's a big room. And a uh, very big room. It's a big coat. <laughs> Big coat. Uh, um, but uh, start a war with that thing. Beautiful, beautiful weather out there. We had a great time. Then I went to this restaurant. I forget the name of it. I should remember it, but I went with uh, Monus, who's just a great, great hang. Yeah, peach of a man. And we had one of these waitresses who was really um, body. Ah, uh, good body. No, B A W. Ah, body. Body. The yes. way like you'd say it in Boston. Got it. She's got a good body, buddy. Uh, she comes in, and, and she's like, you know how like you're married, you get a little older, you want to make love to every single human being? Yes. You know, you know what I mean? And she was like, when, when I was 25 or even 35, I would just be like, ah, gross, a lady who's weird and old and fat. Mm. But then now I'm like, hmm. I could get into that really gross, weird look. You can see the beauty in everyone now. It's exactly. Nice. Yeah. It's like on the one hand, it's like, hey, I'm an animal. I want to fuck everybody. What a bad guy. But on the other hand, it's like I'm accepting. I'm open. I, yeah. I, I want to I blow my dad. And she's toothless, and you can find a positive. You're like, oh, I'd probably feel good. You know, you can find a, a spin. Yes. I, I, I'm the I'm the I'm aces. I'm the best guy in the world now. You got AIDS. I want to cheat on my wife with everybody. There you go. It's very nice. So yeah, she's got orthopedic shoes, and her pants are too small, and there's like a, a some dough coming out. Oh, I love a dough. Yeah, and her face looks 
burnt or mashed or something. Ugh, this lady sounds like she's in need of help. Yeah, I'm exaggerating a little, oh, okay, but she's okay. cute. But I, I kind of I liked her her bodiness. Yes, yes, not the body, the body. Uh, no, but I liked the body too. All right, not well, ideal. But you're naughty. She looked like. Did you ever play um, ice hockey for Nintendo? Nah, not really. All right. Well, I guess. Doesn't matter. But then you could get a little guy, a skinny guy who was fast but breakable, a little guy who was fast but whatever. There was a fat guy who uh, was really strong but fat. Oh, okay. She was that guy. Got it, got it. She was strong and fat. But um, <laughs> but anyways, you know when you just have a good rapport with a waitress, oh, you're excited, you flirt, you, you, you're fun, it's goofballs. Go bear rapport. So I went, hey, man, I am, uh, I'm I'm excited to be here. I'm starving. And she's like, whoa, starving. One of these guys. She was kind of giving us the biz. Yeah. Fun. And then uh, we're looking at the menu, and she comes over, and I'm like, ah, I can't decide. I got six things here I'm thinking about, so we might need a minute. And she goes, all right, well, I thought you were starving. And I go, well, I am. And it was kind of that thing of like, are we fighting or flirting? Yeah, What's happening? Yeah, I like that. And then what do you make of this? Because it gave me a rock-hard boner. Ooh. She's walking by. She had a little bag of goldfish, like huh. a little, you know, those little bite-sized Sure, goldfish. sure. Walks by and goes, uh, I don't want you to faint, and tosses it. At me, like Sam below, like slid it, and it just hits the table and slides, and it st- like spun and landed like facing me. Oh, Jesus! And it really made me want to like just unfold her and eat her out. Oh, wow! Yeah, well, we've got to move like, a lot of that dough. I mean, a goldfish toss. Man, that's hot. She and, was definitely flirting. And then I actually ate him. I, I was kind of sitting like this and doing like a. And when she came over, and she said, "How you fish?" And I said, "Hey, I like to fish, if you know what I mean." Ooh. And, um, you know, we ordered the food, and it was quite flirty. But then, you know when you have, like, a good rapport, and then they just take it just a little too far? Uh. She comes back, like, every three minutes, and she's like, how are you homos doing? Should I uh, uh. Should I cut your dicks off or get you another round? And you're All like, right. all right. We got it. Yeah. 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 There's a little <laughs> thing called timing. We both just kind of had this thing of, like, boy, this really soured. Yeah. And- yeah well, you gave her an inch. And she, she jumped on it. It's like a film where you're like, look at all this action. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah, I don't know. It's too much. Yeah, you hear that, John Wick? But no, I totally get it. It, it starts great, but you gotta uh, you still got to monitor it. You can't just go all in because then it's ruined. By the end, we were like, oh, God. I've done that with flirting, too, where uh, you know, like you'll be talking to a lady in high school, and she's like, yeah, maybe we could watch a movie together. And I'm like, yeah, I love a movie. I'd love to shoot a movie of jizz on your face. She's like, I gotta go. And you're like, oh, wait, I blew it, you know? Because you gotta pretend that you don't want to fuck her. It's very silly. Shoot a movie of jizz is pretty good. That's All nice. Right, well, yeah, that's on her. She's she a stick in the mud. She didn't like it. It was my cousin. <laughs> Maybe try film next time. Film. It's artsy. A, f- a film of jizz. Yeah. By the way, I saw an ad for a movie that it said nonstop action. I'm like, How, what world are we living in? That's positive. All right. Nonstop action. You're yeah. like, what? There's no dialogue? Yeah. <laughs> it's a shit movie. Yeah. How does it open? <laughs> I mean, can't you have even like 70% action would be annoying. Even a porno, which has a lot of action, has some, some moments of not action. You got to meet the teacher. Isn't stop action? Isn't that something? Stop like motion. Play? Oh, stop motion. Animation. Yeah. Uh huh. Horace and Grimace. What is it called? Boy, death, death is the ultimate stop motion. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Michael all J. Right. Fox is stop motion. These two episodes in a day are are tough. Uh, these are some of my favorites. Uh, that's you after a goldfish. Um. But anyways, I, none of that had anything to do with anything. But then I went to uh, Los Angeles. Is the point. Yeah, L.A., Tinseltown, La La Land. Well, first I went back to Gig Harbor for one day, which was mm. nice, because you kind of settle. You go from showbiz to, like, settle back into some family hang, and then you head to L.A., which, by the way, that trip is longer than you think. I'm like, I'll go to Seattle, I'll just dip down to L.A., but you're L.A. is like, all the way down there. It's like a three-and-a-half-hour flight. Yeah, that is a little hectic. So I go down to L.A., and uh, I'm excited, and I have this thing now. You know, I'm having a baby. My father's gay. I'm like, I got to start... Making moves, yeah. Because everyone, you know me. Everyone goes to L.A. They hit Bobby Lee and and the other guy and yeah. Tim Dillon, and the, you're doing six pods a day. You have general meetings and lieutenant Ugh. meetings. Yeah, and hate what, them all. None of them, none of them amount to anything, by the way. You're you're, you're working it. You're doing spots, and I go out there. I I, I see a, a, I smoke a cigar with John again. I go to a basketball game with Chris Walsh. I, I kiss 
Andy Hendrickson on the lips, and I do one podcast that uh, nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> so I go, this time I go, I'm going there, and I'm going to fucking make moves, I baby. see. Did Andy Letterman, the other one? Yeah, I, I really set some stuff up, and I was like, this is going to be, this is a business trip. Hell yeah. And I'm going in on Monday, and I'm doing Santino's podcast. Hey, that's a doozy. That's huge. Huge. He's a star, this man. He's a red-headed, fun cat. And every time I'm in L.A., he says, hey, you got to do my pa, and it just doesn't quite work out. He keeps trying. I miss him. He misses me. Whatever. Mm. Uh, he comes up with some excuse to not have me. But So this time I go, we're doing it. We're locked and loaded. There you go. Put the pressure on. And he says, you know, I'm on the road, but I'll be back Monday. I said, I'll be there Monday. Can we do Monday evening? He says, you got it. So now then I get there. I go to the Hotel Ziggy, which you ah, stayed at before. I love the Zig. Right across the street. That's the, the, the comedy hotel now. And there's a show in there, by the way. That's right. So I go over there, I check in, and I'm going, all right, well, we don't have a, you know me, I'm a schedule guy. Oh, yeah, Ziggy Smalls. I like a time, I like uh, I like uh, to know what's going on, but all I have from Santino is uh, Monday evening. Oh, I hate that, a little vague. So I'm just sitting there and uh, jerking off, looking at photos of him, you know, just can't wait. I'm waiting, <laughs> and Ginger. I start thinking... Should I text him and go, hey, uh, what time? But Three, four, five, something. You know, my parents don't look me in the eye or hug me, so I, I got no confidence. And I go, well, maybe he probably he knows I'm here. He doesn't uh, want to have me. Oh, here we go. So it gets about 5 p.m., 6 p.m., around 6.30 p.m. I'm like, well, the late afternoon has come and gone. Ship has sailed. He hates me. Everybody hates me. Then you got shows. Right? No shows. Oh, that no night. shows. Okay. It's Monday night. So I'm like, I'm doing Santino. I don't need to do a show. That's the big kitten caboodle. Sure. So time passes and uh, I go, all right. Well, obviously uh, I suck and nobody likes me, including my parents. So yeah. I text old C Dub, Chris Walsh, my old pal, played Uncle Maki in uh, the hit film Fourth of July. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, I say, hey, you want to go see. Uh, What's the name of that horror? F the Boogeyman? The Boogeyman. <laughs> That's Stephen, it. It's a Stephen King picture. They, they didn't really um, get creative there. Because I go, I haven't heard from anybody, and uh, I was going to go to some show, and then I was like, whatever, whatever. Someone asked me to do a show, and I was like, I don't feel like doing a show. I'm jet-lagged. I'm gay. And he goes, great. Let's go see the Boogeyman. <laughs> what a friend. This guy is spontane. Oh, he's the best. So now I'm just like... Now I got to do push-ups and, and, and try to make a video because I came into L.A. going, I'm going to cream uh, the pan. I'm yeah. going to wipe the floor with this town. Yeah, you're And now I'm Ziggy. going to see Boogeyman with Chris Walsh. Oh, man. That, you could do that in uh, New York. So we go to the Grove. and But now, don't you have this feeling, once everything frees up, you go, this is great. This is of my course. favorite thing to do. I love going to the movies. I love hanging with Chris. So we catch up. We walk around the Grove. We go to the movie. Lights go down, the screen comes up, the magic, dun, 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 and I'm like this, ah, uh -oh. Hollywood movie. In comes the shooter. I go, oh, shit, I forgot to put my phone on vibrate. Yeah. Santino. Dude. I'm like, ah, he hits me. It's 8 p.m. The movie is beginning. Oh, my God. And Box I get Santino going, hey. What's up? And I'm like, fuck. So I'm like, this guy, I hate a texture in a movie, but it's, yeah. he's a movie star, this guy. Oh, he's big. Yeah, he's probably in Boogeyman. So I go, hey, uh, what's what's going on? He's like, what the fuck? I totally spaced. I'm a fucking idiot. I hate myself. I'm a piece of shit. And I go, hey, don't worry. I, I forgot about it, too. Meanwhile, I was crying yeah. half an hour earlier. <laughs> I had my tuxedo on. I go, oh, no, what, that old thing? I didn't even rely yeah. on that bumping my career up. That wasn't even the cornerstone of this whole trip. No big whoop. <laughs> So he writes, what about Wednesday? Can you do Wednesday? I say, put me down for Wednesday. Okay. I'll clear the schedule. He goes, okay, 4 p. Wednesday. I say, thank Christ on Christmas. You got it. Finally a time. Put the phone on silent. Shove the phone in the pocket. Put my feet up. I watch The Boogeyman, and uh, yeah, pretty fun. It's a win-win, though. You got a you got a movie in with Walshie, and you got the pod still. Yes, and, and, and I, I mentioned it before it was Chris. We're all Boston, but it's like family. It's like I got to connect with some family. It all worked out. Too bad you're leaving LA on Tuesday. So I go, great. That's all done. Then I do Zha, You know Zha Ying Summers. Mm -hmm. She's a beauty. We did. I did her. Oh, yeah. oh shit! I owe her a text. I, I fucking she, totally forgot. She does my laundry. I think. <laughs> she um. 
She's great. I go and do her podcast. We do a couple of videos together. I go over. I do Corolla. Okay. Hit the Corolla show. Uh, Adam you Corolla. You're doing some rounds here. You got that right. Plus, I got my juggernaut. Yes. Santino. Round syndrome. That's hit and clean up. You're a round eye. Then I go and do uh, the store. I did a, a spot at the, uh, the the what's the baby room? The uh, what's it called? Belly. The belly room. Yeah, boy, look at you. What, what are you, uh, Brian Callen? I'm uh, I'm I'm running that town. I go over there. I see all the buddy boys. Luke comes and hangs out, and and Letterman, and I saw uh, you know Whitney Cummings and uh, all the people. It's very exciting, and uh, Ali Makovsky, who I love seeing. Oh, she's a good egg. Great hangs, cool to be at the store. Then my hotel's right across the street. Oh yeah, and uh, it's it's just a great time. Then uh, the I got the improv. That's the big show. I'm doing two shows at the improv. Love it. Wednesday night. So I wake up Wednesday morning. I got the big Santino Corolla in the morning. Santino in the afternoon. Woo! Action packed day. Huge Nonstop day. action. Two celebrities, and then uh, I got the. Uh, uh, oh, let me dude. just. Let me just see what's going on here. Whoopsie daisy, big fuck up. Can't do the uh, podcast today. We'll do it another time, I promise. And I go, hey, no, that. What are you kidding? I didn't even want to do that. Yeah. Bullshit. Who's this again? Uh, I, I hate redheads. I got too many followers. My ticket sales are through the roof. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I like when my special just stops at a number and stops gaining views. Don't sweat it. Well, let me ask you, because you can't help but wonder if you were Theo Vaughn, is he? Is he? Is he spacing? Is he? Hey, dude. Well, I'm not Theo Vaughn. I guess so. But you, you want to treat everyone equally. Uh, yeah, he's very. I mean, first of all, I gotta say he's, he's sweet he's as very pie. Helpful. He'll get me on. I'm He'll sure I'll do on. the podcast before I pass away. Eventually, yeah. Twelve years, maybe. Plus the specials coming out in August. That's better oh, if I do you it. Got then. A little, little yeah, grace. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Under fire. He, he likes me. I'm not pretty sure. He likes you. Yeah, he's a, he's a good so. guy, and he's a he's a he's a mensch. Yeah, he, he. I think I think so. But uh, but you know it happens. But you're like, all right, sir. But that's actually nice too. Even though I wanted to take the world by storm. Yeah. That opens up the schedule. I hit up John again. I go, hey, I'll see you at the V cut. Let's have some cigars. Oh yeah, V cut. So I go over the V cut. We have a great hang. Cigars. Henry Phillips comes. By the way, I spent. I for, somehow I forgot to mention Henry. I spent most of my time with Henry. We went out to breakfast. Stories galore. We're laughing our asses off. Henry Winkler. Who's got more stories than uh, old Hen? The best. The best. Hen house. Best hang there is. He's scoring the, the Tom Dustin mm -hmm. film, which is exciting. He might even write an original song for it. That's Holy gonna be a big moly. deal. Get excited for that film. What a talent. So I'm doing the improv. I got my friend Lindsay Adams hosting. I got... Uh, Henry Phillips on the show. I got Luke Monis on the show, and then uh, my old pal Jason Lawhead coming hey, out to do a guest spot. Boy, a lot of a lot of heavy hitters. We need we need a brown, I think. So, eh, what are you gonna do? There you go. So it's a hang. It's a hang and a half. And then uh, Chris Walsh comes to hang. Jonigan comes to hang. Andy Woodhall comes to Jesus. hang. Andy Hendrickson comes to hang. You got the whole dry bar uh, lineup. We got every white guy within a fifty mile radius is up in that attic. Killer hang, killer shows, Tuesdays galore. Wow. We packed it out. Usually it's two the Jews shows in the attic. Two shows. It was killer, and uh, we just had a hang up there. I Everyone's love it. laughing, shucking. Alar Peak came out. Alar Peak's a good kid. She's a good egg. She came out, and everyone. Uh, oh, who's the other guy? Michael uh, from Rappaport. Phoenix. No, no, he's a Jordan. Phoenix comic. He's funny. I think he might have been in Atlanta at one point. Maybe I made that Phoenix. up though. Michael Costa. Turner. You know him? Turner. Oh, Funny he's a guy. good guy. Yes, he Fun comes. Kid. He he's has, lunch. We're kicking old stories around, and it's just packed in there. There we go. And uh, that was hot stuff, and I think I mentioned most of the stuff. Oh, anyways, so yeah. Still still did some stuff. I did Letterman. I did Corolla. I did Zha Ying. I did my own podcast with Luke Monas, which was great. Oh, nice. Mindful Metal Jacket, which is coming back this week. Yeah. I think tomorrow. I think M tomorrow, Mindful Metal Jacket is back. MMJ. So get on my morning jacket. Get on there. Subscribe. YouTube. The whole thing. And I think Luke Monas is going to be the first one. That's how good it was. We Ooh. moved it up to the top of the pile. Oh, that's a good. That's very flattering, Moni. So I think that's tomorrow. And by the way, you're not going to like this. Uh-oh. I want to do earmuffs. Derek Donovan Walsh said, uh, Luke Monis, he said, that's my favorite friend of yours I've ever hung out with. Oh, that hurts. Yep. 
Oh, he's a he's a show guy. He listens to the show. I know. Well, he, maybe he's intimidated by you, or he's nervous, or uh, you know, maybe you didn't bring I the heat that day. Touch his kid once. What are you gonna do? Uh, I've touched him more than that. Uh maybe I'll do it more. But um, anyways, love the Monas, Mindful Metal Jacket. Check it out. But right. I just wanted to say the improv, magical night. Great room. Yeah, Lindsay, Laura. Andy, Andrew, everybody, everybody hung, and uh, we told a million stories. Then I had this thing, which was brutal. We're up there hanging out all night, and we're like, all right, let's wrap it up. It's getting late. I have an early flight. We walk downstairs. The staff is just standing there waiting to lock oh, up. Oh, I've been there. I was like, what? That's the worst. I thought you guys were, wa- I didn't want to be that guy. No, I'm no. like Eddie Griffin or some yeah. shit. They were waiting for us. I was like, I would have left two hours ago. Ah, oh, you're a black comic. I had no idea. Big entourage, so. taking forever. Oh, brutal. Apologies to the uh, Hollywood Improv and uh, have me back, for God's sakes. I didn't know. Yeah, they'll have you back. I mean, you sold some tickets. You got all the friends there. And you should. You could have thrown all those comics on. Yeah, but I wanted to do my time. Of course, of course. But then it was all those hangs where you go out, you leave, and you go on the sidewalk, and you start to say goodbye, but then you're like, oh, did I ever tell you yes, that one? And then we're yes. just hanging out in the street for a while. You're that right was on, beautiful. On Sunset, cutting up. It's a blast. Melrose. Ah, you're right. But then... Next morning, oh, we had this long debate about who go to the airport. John mm. against one of these guys. He leaves for the airport 10 minutes before the flight. Yeah. I have free check. And you know me, of course. I leave nine days early. I like to, so we had this long debate. Everyone's chiming in. They're like, I'm like you. No, no, you're crazy. No, I would leave at this hour. And I say, I don't, I'm not looking for any advice. My flight's at 945. I'm leaving at 630. I don't give a fuck. Wow. Yada, yada. Get there. Get out of my thing. I go to text John again. I'm like, I'm here three hours early, baby, and I love it. <laughs> three I'm going hours. to that lounge. Whatever, two and a half. Then I get this. Oh, uh, it's Santino. This time it's Delta. Hey, your flight's been delayed four hours. Just Ooh, wanted to let you know. Really four? Literally four. Oh, my Lord. It was going to smog. The smog strangled. All the smoke was out uh, here in New yes. York. London smog. And uh, it ended up being delayed six full hours. It was one of those ones every two hours it goes, you're delayed another hour. I spent wow. six hours. At, that's the six-hour delay, and I was there two hours early. So I spent almost eight hours at the lounge I mean, how, in the airport. How many meatballs can you eat? It was brutal. It was a long, long fucking day. And the worst part was I was like coming back and I had it all planned. The Stanley Cup finals were going on. I was like, I got Thursday. I'm going to get home at 6 p.m., chill out, order food, watch the hockey game, and just unwind. It was a nine day trip. And uh, I lost all. I got home at 1 a.m. And then the next day I had to go right back to work and shit. Oh, 1 a.m. Now, mm. just imagine if you didn't have the lounge. My God. Oh, forget about it. You'd spend eight million bucks at the airport bar. Because that's the other thing is I, I get on a, a lot of, I go to the airport with a lot of openers and they'll be like, oh, we got three hours. We might as well get hammered. And I'm right. like, I like to drink as much as the next guy. I'm hungover right now. I don't want to go get hammered at an airport and then get on a flight and then you get to your city and you're all hung over and right. banged up. That, that's not fun to me. No, well, it was to me, but, you yeah. know, I got you. But I, I, I know the feeling, but uh, something was, at least you could pass the time. And that's be like, true. I'm shit that's house. true. But uh, it, it was rough. But th- the nice thing was so many people got off of my flight because it was delayed so long. I ended up getting the uh, first class upgrade ah. with the bed and all that oh, stuff. Oh, they got the bed. Yeah. Oh, the bed is big. So bed was nice, but uh, no live TV. So I missed the entirety of the hockey game, which sucked. <sighs> But, uh, what happened, Delta? You're, you're number one airline. Well, I think it was the smoke. Ah, the smoke. The yeah, smoke. You don't want none of this smoke. But right. uh, yeah, that was the LA trip. But I'll, I'll get on Santino Pod. I I swear to God. The funny thing is, you could have done three Santinos on that that airport trip. I know it's a good point. But he's he's a busy man. He's got multiple podcasts. He's a movie star. He's a TV. He's, he's touring. He's, yeah, he's, I mean he's huge. I bumped into him and I said, I'm going to. Uh, Australia goes, I was just there shooting a movie for a month. I was like, who are you? You're yeah. like fucking Margot Robbie. Nicest guy, by the way. Great so, egg. So nice. And he's one of these guys like, wow, I didn't want to bother you. He's like, bother me. What are you out of your fucking mind? He's like, just text me, you dummy. I'm he's, like, oh, I hate myself. He's a normal dude. He's a, he's a mensch, and um, I usually hate redheads. Hmm. Yeah, not a fan. I think they're uh, cursed. Should I keep going? Where are we at for time? Oh, oh, okay. I got more stuff over All here. All right, bring it on, you, you got more stuff? I'm out. I got the Jewish wedding and uh, 
that's it. I saw the the moil, and you got a V cut. I'm out there, Jerry, and I'm loving every minute. By the way, there's uh, what the fuck's his name? Ah, oh, shit, the guy that works at the V cut. Gail Carnegie. He's a huge Hugh Jackman. Huge fan. I'm uh, spacing on his name Greg right Martin. now. Brandon, Brendan, mm. Alex, Brad, Charlie. Mm, they were in Vietnam. Steve, Vince, Steve Vinny. List. I don't know if we're going to get it. Even if you said it, I wouldn't know it. Well, you wouldn't know it. You don't oh, okay. go there. But he's a fucking asshole. The old guy's he's name is Derek. Huge gay. He gave me a beautiful cigar. I got to give him a shout out. I don't know his name. Uh, I forgot his name. I know his name. But I just, I'm just i spacing right now. The cameras are on. I'm so sorry, close, Charlie, close, Steve, but Mike, no Dave, cigar. Bob. Tell him, Steve, Dave. Ah, uh, fuck! He gave me a he gave me a fucking Cuban cigar longer than my father's cock. It was a beauty, and I went Jeez. right home and smoked it. Two inch cigar, pretty good. Oh, shit! Charlie, Brandon, Brendan, Colin, Ruth Ann, Michael, <laughs> Steve. I'm sure you got it at some point. Ah, uh, Brady, Brody, Brandon. Mm. We're not gonna say it. We don't know it. Yeah, I guess this is just. A nightmare. Either way, I think I know who you're talking about. He's doing Santino's pod tomorrow. <laughs> well, uh, let me tell Oh, I forgot the six-hour flight delay. This this name do anything for you? Bob Baffert? BB. <laughs> Don BB. I don't know, Bobby. <laughs> Bob I'm Baffert. Baffert. He's I'm the baffled. most famous horse trainer guy. Ah. You'd know him if you saw him. Big head of white hair. He's got a big mop of white hair. Okay. Very wealthy. He wins the, all the derbies oh. and the duck hounds or whatever. Is he short? Like a jockey? No, he's not a jockey. He's uh, like I the see. owner guy or the trainer. or the. Oh, I think he's the owner. Okay. Chuck, pull up Bob Baffert. I think he's an owner. I think he's a horse owner. <laughs> how did, was he sm- swarmed with people? Was he mobbed? I mean, how'd you recognize him? I saw the face and I knew everyone. He had like a, a gang around him. Horses and uh, no horses. A band you can't of fly horses. with a horse. Ah, uh, true, of course. A horse, a horse, a kingdom for a horse. He uh, he's got this mop of bright white hair. You'd recognize him. I, I don't think. know about a Baffert. Well, I don't know. What do you got? American racehorse trainer who trained the 2015 Triple Crown winner. And, yes, and the 2018. Well, what was that cigar? Brown cigar. What was his name? Uh, American Long Pharaoh cigar. and Justify. Yeah, oh, close enough. Justify coming down. <laughs> Well, he's a he's the big guy. You'd recognize him. You wouldn't recognize him, I guess. But uh, yeah, I was looking at him, and he's got to be worth $25 billion. Wow, Baffert. So Bobby Baffert, you were right next to a celeb. You had no idea. I don't know. That wasn't really anything. Horse face. But uh, let me tell you about this, because I think you might enjoy this. I don't know if it's a story or whatever. Put it in my dick hole. We did these two episodes in a day are tough, but... I had a spot at the old Fat Black Pussycat Bar. Ah, the recently. bar can be tough. It can. So this is at the Comedy Cellar's sister room or cousin room or whatever the fuck. Bread. So I uh, horse bread. Ah. So I walk into the uh, loaf. lounge. I walk into the bar and I'm a little early. You know me, still the same old G, but I've been low key. I look at the video. I see Keith Robinson is on over at the lounge. Yes, yes, funny guy. So I go, oh, let me pop over and see Keith. He'll be dead by the end of this podcast. Sure, as a stroke of genius. So I poke in. I look in there, and this man, Keith Robinson, one of the most beloved men comedian ever, New York staple. Anybody not like Keith? I think the clan. Yeah, maybe them. But anyone that knows them, even no. the clan, if they saw him, True. Him, talk to him, they'd be like, this guy's all right. Yeah, grand wizard of comedy. So I go, let me go see Keith. I poke in there. And now I haven't seen Keith in a while. Always a funny guy. I'm like, yeah, this will be fun. I'll watch Keith for a little bit. Mind blowing. Come on. Murdering. Wow. Murdering. The best shit. I, I feel like rock and comedian. Wow. This is the best show I've seen. In 10 years. I was in Australia, probably hammered at a bar, and you're texting me this. I was like, how about, wow, you're blown away. I mean, uh, stories, he's talking about his stroke, and then he had a second stroke, and he he had a stroke during COVID, and he's telling the stories. It was like Pryor. It was better than Pryor. Wow, come on now. I'm I'm not kidding, Jerry. I'm like, I mean, Pryor came first, so what I'm not saying Keith is better than Pryor, but I'm saying this show is better than anything I've seen in a long time. And he's like murdering in a way that's like, oh, this is different than like, I killed. Wow. Hey guys, I killed it. 
I mean, like people screaming, wow. yelling, knee slapping, joy, like a joy bomb went off. Yeah, and and just killer stuff, and and he's laughing and smiling and having this joy, and he's all dinged up. I mean, yeah. he's had a stroke. He's, he's and, got the arm thing. Yeah, his arm's a little wacky. He looks like Trump imitating oh, a yeah. tard. Yeah, yeah, that guy, the New York Times fellow. Right, whatever. right. But I mean, you, you got to see the show. I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like. Henry Hill's girlfriend, Janice Rossi. You got to see these impressions. It's funny because he was on VU before me, and I was running. I was running there, and I was like, "Keith's on. I want to go see it." And I got there, and he was yelling at the crowd, like, "You guys suck. You suck." And I was like, "Damn, he's not not having the moment." Wow, this was he was doing it, and at one point he did the like, "I got the light, but I don't give a shit," and then everyone went crazy for that. And wow, the comics were laughing, and uh, it's just killer stuff. I mean, stories, bits, every kind of way you can be funny, and I've never seen anyone kill the lounge like come this. on i swear to god i mean the lounge is a tough room oh yeah it can be wacky he was murdered and then the stairs are all filled with comics and it was so good i, I was like i was literally blown away whoa and they were like you're next because uh, uh, whoever didn't show up and i was like fuck i want to keep watching this they're like they showed up so i was like oh nice oh, i get great. to watch and uh it was really something. So if you're in New York or if he's on the road, wherever, go, go see the show. He's got to film it because... Uh, yes, yes. Put it on wax there, Keith, because we'd like to, like to preserve this. Masterful. And, uh, and as always, just the best hang. Oh, ever. funniest guy. Good hang at the table. You got Henry Phillips and, and Keith Robinson at a table. I'm sitting down. You got that right, Fatty. Because Keith is... What's so great about Keith is, and he, and he says, he's like, you have to be on the side of funny. There's all yes, these debates. Yes. And Keith will take any side against anybody just to be funny. That's yeah, what I love about him. So true. He, you never hear Keith being like this. No, no, that's that's not right. He's like this. Yes, fuck you. Keith, the legendary moment. Said it before. Say it again. Louis C.K.'s in a world of shit because his set got leaked. A big comedian, movie producer guy is is there, and he's going, what he said was abhorrent, that was horrible, you shouldn't even make jokes about that. And we're all debating, and there's like eight comics going, I don't know, and some guys are, yeah, that was too far, that was crazy. And then Keith goes, he walks up, and he goes, what are y'all talking about? And we tell him the story, and he goes, oh, that's funny. And we all lost it, because he was, he was looking at this giant movie producer, you know, famous guy, and he was like, you're wrong, that's killer. Blow me. Now, Keith is the is the best special guy. I got to do the uh, Impractical Jokers cruise with him, and just the, the best hangs. Fucking hilarious guy, but uh, you got to go see the stuff. I mean, obviously, a very funny comic his whole career, and a great, the funniest guy to hang out with yeah. ever. I mean, just has everyone dying and just trashing everybody. But this new hour, this is special. Oh, yeah. Go see it. And to have a stroke and have all the material about it is, I think, two strokes. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, he's all whacked out in the brain from the wings and the fries and the wine. I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah. he's got me doing jumping jacks, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, watch that blood pressure, fatty. Cause, blood uh, pressure's through the roof. The V-cut will get you. You don't have to cut your losses. Oh, I had two cigars yesterday. Oh! So two stupid. in a day. And Ugh. wings and fries Woo! and tater tots. Oh, you're Steinbrenner? Two cigars? Oh, God, I'm going to kill myself. I don't even know if he smokes cigars. But either way, so. where are you going to be there, Sloppy Jalopy? Well, this weekend, I, well, first of all, Mind for Metal Jacket coming back tomorrow. This is I the believe. 11th. Yes. Yes. And uh, 7 Eleven. Uh, uh, where'd you learn how to shoot like that? 7 Eleven. Um, <laughs> this weekend. Irvine, California, Irvine Improv, next weekend at San Jose Improv, August 3rd to the 5th, Providence Comedy Connection, August something to the something, Nashville, uh, Zanies. I also have um, Philadelphia, uh, Helium coming up October Aids. 5th through the 7th, and then um, uh, Cobbs in San Francisco. I have the Dallas Improv nice. soon. Ton of dates. Um, go to my YouTube. I'm putting a ton of shit up on my YouTube. My Metal Jacket is on there. Joe and Ron on Talk Movies is up there. Yes. I'm doing all these play-by-play -play bullshit that's on there. I got a bunch of Grove 34s that are on there. So uh, go subscribe. Obviously, a comedy special called... Uh, oh, we get this the title. Material. Also, by the way, August 18th, my new special comes out. I don't know. Like, fuck, did I not plug that earlier? I'm an idiot. Yeah. August 18th, it's going to premiere probably... Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, something like that. Okay. August 18th on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe. Put that in your books. August 18th. We'll watch it together. We'll be in the chat room just like last time. Algorithm. Nice. Marie Calendars. 
Um, I've got a tour cooking. You don't say. Check my website because I don't have enough new material. I'm terrified of this new tour. It comes out after the Netflix special, which is July 25th. Check that out. Put that in the calendar. But I need new material, so I I got all this free time. So I just hit the agent. I said, book me in some places. And he goes, well, I can't ruin your markets because we're trying to sell tickets. And I go, well, find some new places. This guy found me a place, Davenport, Iowa. I mean, he scoured the earth to find these wacky gigs. So check my website. I might be coming to your backyard. Who the hell knows? It's going to be cunty. It's going to be kooky. Say hello. Got to work out the new. And, uh, yeah, July 25th, Netflix, one-hour special. The word retard is in it quite a bit, and I'm very nervous. Chuck! Check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, at Fun Bearable Pod, everywhere. Um, we're so far out. So uh, Mike Cannon was just on. Hopefully Alan Fitzgerald will be on. I just directed his special. Check it out. It's called Straight for Pay. Nice. Straight for Pay. All right, folks, that'll do it. You heard it here first. Straight for Pay.